what would he what, what would he have to do? Become a man. He would have to become a sinner. But God can sin. So how can God become, man. become a sinner? How can God become a sinner? Sin. By taking our sins on him. So Jesus took our sins on him, so he could become a sinner, so Satan could kill him and send him to, to the to hell. But when he went to hell, he's also God. So he could punch Satan out and take the key and come back out again. Do you get it? Is it making sense now? So that's why he went into hell. He went into hell, not because he deserved to go, because he didn't deserve to go there. We deserve to go there. He went into hell in our place. But because he was God, he was also God, when he went into hell, he had the strength and the power to overcome the enemy and take the key and come back out again. So now when he brought the key back out again, now the, who does he give the key to? Who does he give the key to? He gives it to you and me. Any one of us who believe in Jesus, we become partakers with him. You know what partaker is? Think of it like this. My father had four kids, right? And he had a wife. When my father, he passed away and he died, he left a will. And he said in the will, he divided his property into five parts. So one part his wife got and four parts each of the kids got. So let's make it easy. Supposing there was only, there was only four of us, right? My mother and three of us. So all his property was divided into four parts. So all of each of us got what? One part. We got a quarter, right? We got a quarter of his will. But there's another law which says that when you leave property to your children, you can leave it all to everybody. Do you understand? Which means that if it had been four of us, say my mother and the three kids, and the three kids, we would have all not owned one quarter of it, but we own all of it. Each of us own all of it. So we could have gone into the account anytime any of us wanted and we could have withdrawn everything. You understand? So when God when God makes us sharers, sharers in his, in what he owns in heaven, God doesn't say, okay, I get one part and you get one part. What does God give us? He gives us everything. So whatever he owns, we own everything. Okay, you get it? Let me explain it to you. So when we say Okay, Jesus died on the cross. Jesus died on the cross, right? He, he, he defeated sin, he defeated death. Why are we still sick? Why are we still suffering? Does that ever come to your mind? Why are we not rich? Why are we poor? Why are there people hungry? Why are there people starving? Let me explain it to you like this. Okay, there was a father. Okay? And this father had a son. Alright? And this son left the father and he came, he left, say he left England, okay, he used to live in England. I'm just giving you this like a story so you can understand, okay. He left England and he came to live in America. Alright, so his father, when he was leaving England, his father gave him a bag of money. When he came to America, he's not talking to his dad anymore, he's mad at his dad for some reason. Alright? Whatever, we don't care what the reason is, but he's mad at his dad, he's not talking to his dad. His dad is still talking to him, but he's not talking to his dad, okay? He comes to America and he goes somewhere, he doesn't want to tell his dad and mom where he is. So he just goes and he hides somewhere and he starts living. But he can find a job and he starts spending the money that his dad had given him and soon the money is all over and now he has no money. He can find a job and he's roaming on the streets begging for food, okay? His father in England, He's not a millionaire, not a billionaire, he's a trillionaire. He think, think he's like the king of England, he owns all of England, okay? That's how much money he has. Even though his father has all of the money, but the son has nothing. Right? Right? So the son, the son, it was a very, very cold day in New York. So the son, he's a bum, he has no proper clothes, he's shivering over there. Guess what the father did? The father, he made a will. And he said, everything I have, I leave to my son. Okay? In the will, he said, everything I have, is leave to my son. And then the father, before he got in touch with his son, the father, he died. So now who owns all of his property? The son. But does the son have any of it? Why? Because he's not with the father. So all the lawyers from England came to America looking for this boy. This is actually a true story, okay? 
It's a true story. The, all, the, all the lawyers from England came to, in, to America looking for this boy and they couldn't find him. And finally when they found him, they found his dead body. He died from the cold. Oh. Well, Even though he was, a, he was a billionaire and he had all this money to his name, but he never knew it. This is like us. Everything in heaven, everything in heaven belongs to us, but we don't know it. We are living here like, like orphans. We are living here like we are penniless. Wait, so do we die? You just have to claim it. But how can you how can you claim it? You have to be with the father. If you tell the father, I don't want you, but I want your money, you're not gonna get it. You get it? This is what Jesus is trying to show us. God is our father. That's why when Jesus taught us to pray, what was the first opening lines of that big symphony? Our, our father. father. Right. Is it making sense to you all? Yes? Sweetie? Yes? Young young girl? You getting it? Okay, how about you? Is it making sense to all of you all? So when we go to church, when we go to church, what are we doing? What do we what do we do when we go to church? Why do we go to church? Why do we go there? We're to pray. Celebrate. Why? We're to pray. When when we are in church, do we get bored? No. Yes we do. Sometimes. And we are all lying if we say we don't get bored because Wait, sometimes, sometimes I do too. Sometimes we get bored, you look around, you see people yawning, you see people daydreaming. You see people, when you go to church, do you always, are you always, from the time you enter the church to the time you leave church, do you always, honestly, can you say that I think of God and nothing else? If we do say that, we are liars. You know why? Because our mind wanders. We are thinking about breakfast, we are thinking about what clothes we are going to wear, we are thinking about school, we are thinking about which friend we want to go and talk to. We think about 10,000 different things. Right, that, that's everybody. It's not just you. It's me too. Yeah, right? Everybody. It's all of us because that's the way our minds are made up. But we have to concentrate and think of God. That's why we go to church. Because that's our time away from all the cares and worries of the world. That's the time we're actually going to refresh ourselves. You know, when we go to church, it's like us going to sleep. When you go to sleep, your brain recharges. Your body has rest. So when you wake up, you feel energized. That's the way church is supposed to make us feel. Like, church should be, for us, like, like we're taking a nice nap, a rest, a peace, peaceful uh, time with God that our, not our body, but our soul is being refreshed. Can any of us see our soul? Uh, no. no. Let me ask you a question. How many times do you eat? Three. Three, three what? Four. Three what? Three times. Three times, three times what? Slack. Is that three times a day? <laughs> yes or no? Two times a day? Not, okay, let's say not, how many not, how many two times a day? Five. How many three times a day? Okay. I let's say one. let's say let's say we, we give it two times a day. Okay? So how many days in the week? Seven. Seven. So if we eat two times a day, how many times a week have we eaten? Fourteen. Fourteen times. How many times a week do we pray? <laughs> One. Seven times two. One time. One time. How many times a week do we pray? I'm not going to ask you this as a question. I just want you to think about it to yourself. Yeah. One. Think about this. If the if the number of times that you pray is the same number of times you eat, what would happen to your body? What would happen to your body? Say we only go to church once a week. Oh, yeah, I only Okay. Church. If we ate only once a week, That's it. bless you. If we ate only once a week, what would happen to our body? So just, think, just because we cannot see our soul and we are only eating and feeding our soul once a week by going to church once a week, what are we, what are we doing to our soul? We are starving. starving. We are literally starving our souls. So do you want your body to starve? Why would we want our soul to starve? Because our body eventually is going to die anyway, but our soul is going to live forever. So which one should we be more concerned with? The soul or the body? The body. Huh? Soul. The soul. The soul. We should be more concerned with the soul. So this is why the Bible says that we should be praying without ceasing. But God understands that we are human. And we can pray all the time and forget about work and forget about family. We have other obligations too. But we have to keep thinking about God several times a day. Thanking Him. When we wake up in the morning, thank Him that we woke up at night. We thank Him for bringing us through the day safely. In the morning we wake up, we ask Him for protection. Because that's the time we are putting on the armor. When we step out of the house, that's when bad things can start happening to us. Right? Bad things can also happen in the house. I'm sorry? Bad things can also happen. It, it could. Bad things can, else can also happen. That's why we need to be talk, praying. When, that's why we, when we get home in the bed, before we go to sleep, we pray at that time too. I do that. Yeah. Good. So you understand why we pray now? 
We ask, we are praying because we need God. It's not because God needs us. Do you think God needs? Well, does it make any difference to God if all of us fall on our knees 24 7 and we say, God, 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 God? God. <laughs> Would it make any difference to Him? No. no. But does it make any difference to God when we as children go to Him and we say, when we go to our daddy and we ask our daddy for something and, our, and we, we tell our daddy, please daddy, because you love me, buy this for me. And your daddy gives it to you because he loves you. Don't you feel good? He never gave That's me what, anything. Well, you need a different daddy. Last time I wanted a corn dog, but he gave me his sister. Oh my. Do you ever tell your daddy you love him? Try saying that. Okay, next time you go to your daddy and tell your daddy, hug him. Hug him and tell him, Daddy, I love you. Are you a good boy? But you have to be sincere. You just can't say it because you want something. Yeah. yeah. You have to be sincere. You have to honestly put your arms around your daddy and hug him. And tell him, Daddy, I love you. Daddy, I love you. Daddy, I love you. Do that every day. You do that every day. Then ask him for something and then see if he gives it to you. Whisper. Yeah? Just whisper on it. Uh -huh. I went to Chile yesterday. What time is this? Meal. Yeah. So there's a lot of times when we will ask God for something and God won't give it to us. Yeah. You know why? Time out! Why? <laughs> why, why, why is it sometimes why is it sometimes when we ask God for something and He doesn't give it to us? Because He knows it's not good for us. You ever think about this? Supposing you have a little baby, right? And every time, what tastes better? Food? Food or, or chocolate? Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> so if you keep feeding the baby chocolate all the time just because the baby cries for chocolate and you don't give the baby anything else except chocolate, what is going to happen to the baby? He's going to get sick and fat and die. Right? He's going to get, He's going to get all kinds of diseases and sickness. So you don't give the baby what they want all the just because they're crying for it. You have to give the baby what the baby needs. The baby might not know that it needs that. This is what God does for us. Sometimes we don't know what's good for us. And we get mad at God, but we should be thankful. Because a lot of the times the things He doesn't give us is not good for us. Right? Do you understand? Okay, let's end and let's end with a prayer. Let's all stand up. We're going to thank God that we have a great Bible class today. Did you all enjoy it? Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Alright guys, there's some chips and cookies here.